What's up guys, we're here today in the city of Medellin. It's a beautiful, beautiful place here in Colombia. Today we are going to be meeting up with one of the best aquascapers from this town. His name is Johnny. We're about to get picked up, so I'm gonna go meet him downstairs. <laughs> I give you the fist bump. Are we on time? Mm. We're here today with John from Aqua Market, and uh, he is the owner of this aquarium shop. My name is Johnny Vanegas. I'm from Colombia, from here, from Medellin. I found the, this store with my wife seven years ago. I always say is that the people that is in this hobby is crazy because it's really hard. He is not only one of the best aquascapers in Colombia, but he's actually been ranked internationally <laughs> in the top 200. So this guy right here, he won't admit it, but he's very, very talented. He's also the owner of a fish store here in Medellin called Aqua Market. It's one of the best fish stores. We sell fish, we sell plants, everything in relation with fresh water tanks. And today we're going to be taking a look inside, giving you a private tour. Definitely an aqua scapers paradise here. Tell me about some of the fish right away here that we see. Here I have most of the captive brand fish. Glowfish. Yeah, glowfish, angelfish, bleeding hair, tetra, some pulcher, this African small cichlid. The fish I love the most, plecos. Plecos. Yeah, I love plecos, so galaxy. Galaxy plecos. Yeah, that one is a blue diamond. Here is a really big one. Oh, wow, yeah. Yeah, six, seven inches. Fish that stood out to me are these guys. What are these fish down here? It's called rosy barb. This is a completely natural look. Yeah, yeah. It's They're... super vibrant red and orange. Yeah. I think these are absolutely beautiful. Where do these fish come from? I think it's from India. All right, so all the fish in your store, where are most of them coming from? Most are from the Amazon, and they are from local uh, wholesalers. They breed them here in Colombia. Hey, what are these? That's African healing. Those are really cool. Yeah, they're just I think that's one of the coolest fish you have. Plants. Tell us about this tank. It's a water fawn tank full of plants. Yeah, our first aquarium for plants. How many different species of plants do you have? Normally 60, 70 species. You know, the, the problem with the lockdown was that it was difficult to sell plants. It's really different to buy in the store and to buy online. What are some of your favorite mean? plants in here? This plant, Starogene Repens, it's from Brazil. I love it. But the most, uh, I love Anubias. Easy to keep, beginner plant. I have Anubias in my planet tank, yeah. so I know what you're talking about. It's difficult, guys, because here in Colombia, it's much harder to get some of these, not only the fish and plants, but to get some of the equipment here, because it's just, it's so much more expensive. If I live in US, it's very cheap. For us, it's four or five times more than US. Fish more, maybe 10 or 15 times more. John here in Colombia will do custom installations he actually builds the tanks, the sumps, the filtration. He does the plumbing, everything, all himself. Again, it's out of necessity because yeah. here in Colombia, to import a tank from the United States or a different country is just so much more expensive. All right, moving over here, more fish. See, all the names are in Spanish, so it's yeah. kind of hard for me to... This is Tetra Rojito, uh, but it's Ghost Tetra. We have black and the red one. Ruby Tetra, Ruby Nose, uh, Golden Tetra. We have here a kind of pencil. And then these, of course, are... Cardinal Tetra. Tell us the difference between the Cardinal Tetras and the Neon. The Neon, it has less red. The Cardinal has half blue, half red. I prefer the Neon. Why because is Cardinal here is too common. I think it's the most famous fish in Colombia. What's your favorite fish? Clown Loach. Clown, those are in the back. Yeah. We'll get there. Our air conditioning system. <laughs> <laughs> wow, look at that. It's beautiful natural light. Over here, we got all the hardscape materials. I know you told me that you source some of it from here in Colombia. Yeah. You actually go out into nature and collect it yourself. Most of them. I have a supplier here. He goes to the nature, take the wool, prepare the wool, and bring it to me. This one is from Mexico. Probably you know it. Wow. Beautiful. The rocks. All right, tell us some stories about you going to collect rocks. <laughs> rocks, I have to go almost two and a half hours from here. This rock, right? Perfect aquascaping material. These tanks, what we got? Shrimps, maybe shrimps. Yeah. Are shrimps popular here in Colombia? It started from a year ago, more or less, to be popular. What are these? The most common pleco, hypostomus, but the albino. 
with the albino ones. Yeah. And then you see some more plecos uh, yeah, it's hanging called out Sarah. there. Yeah. And then what's the one with the orange tail? Flak pleco from Colombia. Oh, the discus. Okay. These okay. are sweet. What are these uh, ones? Turquoise, blue diamond, Altum flora, and giant turquoise. Chess sickly. It's one of the smallest sickly that we have here in Colombia. This is the nature room. I think this is the coolest thing. Here. Monte Carlo, some Utricularia graminifolia. You got a beta in there? Yeah. How I, long has this tank been set up? Two years and a half now. How long did it take before this tank was full of plants like this? Three, four months, more or less. And how often do you maintain it? Water change weekly, and once a month I clean the filter, the glass, and make a 90% water change. The lights, they feel, if you touch them even, they're so hot. This is for patios or external places. It's, oh, so it's not, it's as not for aquarium. DIY. Really, e yeah, DIY. Really easy to maintain, to keep, because these lights are extremely cheap. Mm -hmm. So to show people uh, another way, and to remember me how I start in this hobby. You see all the posters of some of the contests and some of the places you've been. What are these certificates? Another contest, aquascaping contest. This one also ranks all the aquarists by their yeah. aquascapes. Yeah, I, Where did you rank here? The best one, 33. 33? Yeah. Out of how many? Uh, 1,257. That's really <laughs> impressive. So we're heading into the back now. <laughs> it's a mess. <laughs> Old fish store isn't a mess. <laughs> Up here, what are these? <laughs> Garra Rufa. Garra Rufa. People use in a spa to take the excess of skin. They have some gobies there, blue gobies. These are some beautiful loaches. These My babies. Really, your babies? Yeah. <laughs> I love that fish. I love it. Your favorite fish is the yeah. crown loach. Yeah, yeah. What are the really colorful fish that looks like someone took a crayola crayon and marked them? The red, these ones. And Roseline shark. It's a kind of barb, too. Those are some of the biggest ones I've actually ever seen. Yeah. Hold on, there's another fish in there. That's... Yeah, another loach. What kind of loach is that? A skunk loach. This is quarantine place. I bring them here. I keep them for uh, one, two, or three weeks. Depends of the origin of the fish. And then I take for, for the store and sell it. Why is it so important that you quarantine them for almost a month? You know, because here the people that works in this hobby don't know how to keep them, transport them. So they came really sick most of the time. So I have to quarantine first every time. Why is it important that you don't sell sick fish? I want to a really close relation with my customers, so I have to sell them a really good quality yeah. product. Most of the aquariums only sell, but don't teach people how to keep fish. Uh, other stores think more in money, but not in conservation. This is business. We live of this business, but it, it doesn't mean that we have to exploit the, the fish. Many stores sell the fish without quarantine, without any medication. That's a big mistake because many people compete with prices. So I sell this fish, 10 US, the other one, nine, eight, seven. The price in fish is because the way you keep them, I use good quality food for my store fish. But for example, many fish stores use the cheapest food for the store fish. It's not good. It's a challenge to change their mind because it's more money. But I think always in the quality of life of the fish. You were telling me earlier that some of your competitors, they sell aquariums with no filters. And yeah. Why is all this important to you? Like us, the air we breathe is the same for fish. So better water quality, better life quality for our fish. So this, for me, is the most important. So what do you have back here? <laughs> My mess. <laughs> Back here, we have a massive garden of different plants. Look at this. This is crazy. So you're like growing your own plants back here. Yeah. But these are really pretty. These are what, lilies? Here we call them a lectus plant. Lettuce plant. Yeah, lettuce plant. There's some fish and some shrimp in here. Yeah, here I have shrimps. There I have some bird tetra. I breed them. It must be interesting to try to catch them. Some snails. Ah. Uh, snails. And here we have emperor touches. Yeah. Oh. Oh, wow. Those are big. Oh. And some shrimps too, see? They breed like rabbits. <laughs> here I only have plants. I used to have some guppies, but some birds came to here and eat it, so I don't have more guppies. Back here, sure, look at this. Wow, that's crazy. So all these plants are good for aquariums, right? Yeah, yeah. And then you got some koi and other fish over here. Remember the bubbles? Goldfish? Yeah. yeah. Wait, two bubbles, <laughs> only one. <laughs> and you see the big snail asher? Yeah, oh my gosh. And then what is that fish? What is that blue fish? It's an angel. 
Oh, it's an angelfish. Yeah. You got koi, angelfish, oh. goldfish. Dang, this is like uh, the breakfast club out here. Whoa, hey, oh my hey, gosh. Hey, hey. Oh, it's huge. <laughs> that Oscar is massive. Oh, oh, oh. You build your own custom aquariums for clients. You actually, yourself, build them. How did you learn to do that? I went to US, I watched how they build some aquariums. In China, I had the opportunity to see a big manufacturer of aquariums and read, reading, 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 practicing, making mistakes, breaking glasses. That's the only way to learn. We specialize in planted tanks. We make everything, the base, the aquarium, filtration. Oh my God, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> the filtration, everything. We set up tanks. Most of them, we maintain them, so we go once a month to make maintenance. Today, he's gonna to be taking us around to a few of the best privately owned aquarium installs that he's actually done himself. We're here at our first stop, this tank right here. Wow, look at this. You installed this tank? Yeah, this tank is two months and a half, approximately, old. So it's brand new, baby. Yeah, it's my baby, it's <laughs> my last baby, yeah. yeah. The focal point is, was this rock, is 125 kilos. Really hard to make an aquarium with that kind of rock. We made it, four people, we work in this aquarium for almost three weeks. Someday I was looking for rocks and I saw that big rock is 125 kilos and I take it and I say, I don't know, sometimes I will use it. And that was the opportunity to use that rock. For me, it was an achievement. That rock is not common to use in a tank, a rock too heavy. So for me, it was really nice. The craziest part about this tank is that Johnny built it on the spot. The reason that they had to make this tank on the spot was because this rock was so big, they couldn't actually crane it into the tank. Yeah. They had to put the rock into the tank first and then build and glue the rest of the glass walls around it. That tank for me is our best customer. They trust a lot in, in us. In, in our work. They say, we want an aquarium this size, but you choose the hardscape, everything. It's your decision. Sometimes I spend more money, but I don't care because I'm trying to make my best, to make happy my customers. Well, as you guys can see, it's a double view. So we're gonna go inside now and take a look. All right, we're inside the area now. This is the opposite view. How many different types of species of fish do you have in here? Almost 10. How many different types of plants do you have? Plants, more than 20. I really don't know how many. <laughs> how big is this tank? Liers is 3,200, more or less. What are the dimensions of the tank? 320 centimeters. Why is 90 centimeters and 90 centimeters high? Everything is in the metric system. Yeah. <laughs> American founders, why did you do this? Like three feet, three feet, if and 10 long. Tell us a little bit about all the different plant species that are in here. This is a that, type of what? Yeah, that one is hairgrass. And this is Liliopsis brasiliensis. Mm -hmm. That one is Rotala rotundifolia. And in the back is Rotala echra. Both are the same morphology, but different colors. You see the difference here? The red one, green one, and pink one. The same plant, but it's different color. What about some of the fish that are hanging out here? Golden tetra, red rainbow from Asia. And in the bottom, I have a cichlid black phantom. The green plant, there is ancestral. Ah, a little pleco. I, I love them. <laughs> so how many days did this take to set up? The hardscape and planting, two or three days. The hardest work was to glue the tank and the mm. filtration, everything, accessories. So if we open these, you see the lighting. They are really good for high tanks, planted tanks. We can open up the bottom. Wow. So this is the filtration. Yeah. You made all this yourself. Yeah, yeah. It's very impressive that you actually do all of the tank and sump work yourself. Yeah. By hand, right? Yeah, because it's too expensive to bring a tank like this from US or China. So it's better to make myself. This has so many different types of plants in it. CO2, what's going on So here? I have... Oh! The doors continue. This, is, this is little yeah. tank. This layer of tank <laughs> is the only way I can get the best CO2 for this tank. How often do you maintain this tank? Because it's an exhibition aquarium. I have to come three times per month. One time for maintaining big water change, and the other times just clean the glass. So this rock actually used to be in nature, and now it's representing nature here in this beautiful aquarium. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, that's stop number one. We're gonna be checking out some other really cool aquariums done by Johnny, so moving on. The next tank we're gonna be looking at, Johnny's also installed this one. This tank is even bigger than the last one. Yeah. It's almost 3,000 liters, plus some 3,400, more or less. 
The first thing that stands out are these angelfish. Those this is down. albino of altun. These are the autumn angelfish. Yeah. These are the albino versions yeah, of right. angelfish. You can see a whole herd of the rummy narrows tetras. They're really nice and big, super fat. At the beginning, like 200. But these guys, the altum, they ate most of them. What's the price of an autumn angelfish? Here is 15, 20 US. What are these redfish called? Llama de velo. What are these guys? It's a kind of cichlid, American cichlid. How many different kinds of plants do we have in here? 10. I want to show you something. Oh. See the big plants over the wow. top of the water? The plants are actually growing out yeah. of the tank. It helps me maintain the nitrates down. We're all about that. We love keeping those nitrates low. It's so cool to see the wood and the plants coming out of it. Yeah. And you guys do CO2 on this, right? Here, I have the, the bottle, the smaller ah. one. <laughs> hey, puppy. How long did it take you to build this one? Almost a month. To glue the glass, to bring the filter to. The filter, I glue it in my store. You can see it's loaded with biological and mechanical filtration. What are those bags of? Curigen. How did you bring this fish tank in here? No, we assemble here. This tank. Oh, you actually we glue it here. If it's more than 200 centimeters long, because it's really hard to move the. Once it's built. Yeah. How old is this tank? Year and a half. These plants here that are attached to the wood. Yeah, that narrow fern and trident fern. For this kind of aquarium, I choose really low maintenance plants. I use ferns, Grophila corimbosa, and the biggest one is Echinodorus radicans. What kind of rocks are these? That's lava. That's lava the... rock. Yeah, I'm bringing it from Ecuador. I love this tank. I think this tank is so amazing and it's huge. I mean, what is this? One of my six feet? It's like two Georges long. <laughs> How long did it take you to aquascape this tank? Two days. Two days? Yeah, right. It was really fast because I had idea in my mind. I really like the way the hair grass is inside of like the lava rock. Something that is really difficult in this kind of tanks because it has two views is to center the hardscapes. Two views, yeah. to make sure that they both look good. So now it's going to a sunset. Because here they open from 6 a.m. to 2 p.m. So the day end here at 2 p.m. So now it's sunset. Yeah, it's like so, noon, but yeah. to this tank, it's going into the sunset. We're now on the way to the third aquarium the Giants built. Another amazing tank coming up. The third tank. This is also beauty. As you said, it's very different from the other ones. Yeah, it was the first one. This was the first one. It's built. three years and a half old. This is 2,000 liters. Right away, the thing that I love these plants. It's a mania bonsai. It looks fake. Everyone thinks it's like plastic. Right, it yeah. looks like it's a plastic plant, but it's real. It's beautiful. And the way all the plants are sort of grown into each other. This opens up. Yep. This wow. is. Wow, that's a big song. Uh, yeah, that almost 100, really maybe more. Look at them. <laughs> Look how many little shrimpies are in there. Yeah, that's my crew. It's really difficult to keep all the shrimps in the tank. They go through the overflow, then go to a filter. And, and so this is actually where they naturally Yeah, have they have tons of food there. So this is a school of cardinal tetras. Cardinal and neon tetra. Some you see have the red and some are just all blue. Yeah, and they have some rose line shark. What are these beautiful red plants over here? Ludwigia glandulosa, Grophila pinatifida, some hair grass. Look at the flower. It's a cryptocorine, nori. So we have like a black substrate into white sand over here. This is what I have in my plant. Yeah, for this kind of aquarium and tetras, it's really amazing that kind of substrate. See, so they're full of oxygen. You can see the plants, yeah. yeah. Full of oxygen. So we're gonna go to the other side of the aquarium now. Wow. For me, this is like a pest. Rikia fluviatilis. I take it out every month, but I have to live with it. So, so cool. I love this plant. Yeah. It's beautiful. It looks like it's like a hedge. What is this? That's the, the one I catch in the rivers here. Again, all the rock in here is rock that you've caught yourself. Dude, these are some fat cardinal tetras. Yeah, they are like four years old. And then what is this green one over here? That's Echinodorus vesuvius. I love here how there's a cove underneath all like these a, plants. Yeah, like you a bridge. Can see, you can, it's like a bridge, you can see all the way through. It's like a jungle, it looks like kind of like a yeah. forest. They're all different, you know? All different types of landscapes. All three of them have been gorgeous. What are some tips you have for aquascapers who are doing really big tanks like this? Over filtered. Um, more plants, it's easiest to keep. They do their work and do it with love. I'm very impressed with all three of these tanks. You always hear people talk about how aquariums bring relaxation and you can really relieve a lot of stress. This style, 100%. Many of the patients from here, they scare you about needles, so they sit here <laughs> before. It's funny, but it works. In my life, I love to make the things 
the best way as I can. We start Aqua Market with 12 aquariums and aquascaping, I started like six years ago and I start to practice. I make a lot of mistakes. For me, it's the best way to learn. Now I'm practicing, I'm still practicing. My full time job is working with aquarium. I'm doing what I love. I want to do the things every time as best as I can. It's the only thing I care about. Everything I know now is because of them, of the people around me, not for me. I like to study a lot. I need to be in constant learning. My dream is when a customer goes to my store, he can buy everything he needs for the tank. So that's our goal and our future. All right, well, I hope you guys guys enjoyed seeing some of Johnny's best aquascape. I'm very impressed. Some so of much. the best aquascapes I've seen. And if people are interested in having you scape their tanks, where can they find you? Aqua Market, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube too. Johnny has a YouTube channel. It's Aqua Market and his name Johnny Vanegas. He has videos in Spanish. So if you're Spanish speaking, he's got tons of tutorials on there. You can see more of his aquascapes. I'll link his channel in the description and I'll put the information to his fish store, Aqua okay. Market, also down below. So you can find it. Whether you're in South America or you're located anywhere in the world, Johnny will come to you and he'll aquascape and or build your tanks. You've been so helpful. Thank you no, so much for taking you. us around. Yeah. It's us a pleasure for me. Wow, guys, that's a pretty amazing story. I don't know about you, but those are the kinds of stories that really inspire me. I love meeting people who are really passionate about what they do. The fact that Johnny has been doing this for seven years and he's only getting better and better. You can see the passion he has. And the people here in Medellin in all of Colombia are really lucky that there's leaders like him doing everything they can to grow the hobby here to do it the right way. So if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel. We have an entire series shot here. So if you like these videos, we got a bunch more. I'll see you guys in the next one. But until then, remember to keep those nitrates low. George, out.